We're back on our Param 5500 self-leveling overlay. On this side, we have the Pellucid dye, and over here, we have Aquacolor. A couple real important pointers here. The Pellucid dye basically has a binder, and what that means is, after it's fully cured, it allows you, or it enables you, to go back on top of it with um, a water-based epoxy, and you're not going to get roller lines. However, on the aqua color over here, there's no binder to help lock that color pigment. So what we need to do is we need to lock it down prior to putting our uh, water-based epoxy. So what we're using is AO3, water-based acrylic. It is important, and normally I like to back roll um, a water-based acrylic, but if we back rolled, it could, it could bleed the color like we talked about. So we're going to try to use a sprayer here that really atomizes um, the AO3 here. So this is a non-drip sprayer, so we're cool. So I'm just going to go and start applying it. Another reason, um, on some self-leveling overlay cements, if you went just with a straight epoxy, um, basically they're so dark and when the epoxy absorbs down into it, and I'm going to put this down so I can pump it up here, what happens is the, the, the epoxy right on the surface, it literally just darkens the surface so much. So one way to eliminate that from happening is to uh, prime, in essence, with the AO3, like you see it's doing right here. And that's going to, once it dries, more preserve the, uh, the base color. We're on our Param 5500 self-leveling overlay cement panel and we're about uh, ready to seal it with E32 water-based uh, epoxy. Just a quick recap what we did up until this point. Here on this side, the light gray is the pellucid dye. On that side is aqua color and we mix the aqua color with water. So if you, if you just start to seal over the Param 5500, you need to be careful uh, because you could get some roller lines because of the porosity. So the pellucid dye has a carrier, so that kind of locks it in, so you don't have any issues with uh, roller lines. And on the, on, on the uh, aqua colors, basically we, we pre-sealed it with AO3, just a really light coat of water-based acrylic. Now we're ready to go with our, uh, with our E32. A couple observations. You see, I always want to keep my feet nice and clean. And I'm going to start off rolling this way and then I'll come back and roll perpendicular to back roll. So I'll, I'll roll out about uh, four or five feet in this direction and then as I mentioned we'll come back and back roll it. Now you can see on this panel we do have some uh, very basic decorative saw cuts so when I load my roller I don't want to go right from, from the roller tray onto a saw cut because it'll puddle in there. So we're just basically trying to roll over the top. If you get a little bit in there, you can either take a, uh, a paintbrush and brush it back out. Um, just don't try to, to put so much of the sealer on that you're filling the joints. So we'll go halfway on this and then come back and back roll and then finish this panel off. Not a bad idea once in a while, keep this edge fresh out here. Right now I'm more concerned about getting the product on the floor and then when I back roll it I'll have a little bit more finesse on the back roll. 
Okay, now as I go over to back roll, like I mentioned already, let's just keep this edge fresh a little bit. Now I'll come on this way and back roll. Now what's important is uh, technique here. You don't just simply push the roller out there and pull it back. In reality, what you're doing is you're putting more pressure on the right side of the roller, feather edging the left side. I have a lot of people call and say, hey, we got roller lines. And then when I start questioning them about it, they thought perhaps you just push the roller out and back. So you're actually twisting the handle ever so slightly to put less pressure on the left-hand side of the roller and more pressure on the right-hand side of the roller. So this is the term that we use back rolling. You can see I have my telescoping uh, handle, so I'm able to get all the way across a eight to 10 foot section here. Okay, we've just uh, applied our E32 water-based epoxy to our Param 5500. Um, again, you see kind of a whitish milky appearance, which is common on water-based products. And that will usually clear up uh, within about 45 minutes, depending on the site conditions, of course. Now, again, also depending on the ambient and substrate temperature, um, typically you're recoating between two and three hours. Uh, has to be tack free, obviously, because you've got to be back out on it. But uh, that's it on that one. So we'll give it uh, another two, two and a half hours, and we'll come back and put our final top and clear coats on it. Okay, we just finished mixing our Purdue U46, which is a water-based polyurethane. Just to recap, this was our uh, Param 5500. Uh, we did put an, a, a coat of E32 uh, water-based epoxy, and we're back now, oh, roughly two and a half hours after that application. Um, and it's pretty much tack-free, so we're ready to go on, on this with uh, the U46 urethane. Now, we already delinted our roller cover, and that's really important. And certainly when you step onto a, a clean floor, you want to make sure that you do so with clean feet. Um, this is a great product. It's extremely durable, great abrasion resistance, and it provides superior gloss. Rolls down really nice. We're going to uh, put this product down very similar to how we put down the E32, which is we're going to roll the material out one direction like this. And then we're going to do approximately half of the panel. And then we're going to come back and back roll it. So right now, I'm just concerned about getting the product out on the floor. We talked uh, in an earlier video about how much you put on your roller cover. And usually, you should be able to get a good four feet to five feet. I've loaded my roller cover. I'm going to push back and push this way. That's about the appropriate amount. Halfway, halfway. Roller cover is pretty loaded, so, that we're, so we're good there. When you're getting to the final stages on your decorative floors like we have here, it's not a bad idea if you need to bring in a set of halogen lights. Make sure you have sufficient lighting. And I'll even usually, if the lighting's even remotely poor, I'll just have someone be an extra set of eyes for me because uh, it's very easy to miss something. And there's uh, no worse feeling that you come back the following day and you see something right out in the middle of the floor that you missed, a little V where the roller went off one way. So now we're going to back roll it. We've talked about in multiple uh, videos, there's definitely a, an art to back rolling. It's not just push the roller out and back. I have uh, oftentimes people will call me and say that they're getting excessive roller lines. And when you watch their technique, they're using bad technique. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm trying to apply more pressure to this side of the roller and less pressure to this side of the roller, thus feather edging over here. And that really is a, a good little trick to feather edge the inner edge here, the left side of the roller, and that's going to greatly reduce the chance for roller lines. You see how nice and flat this product lays out. All right, I'm going to come over here, finish this half off, and that'll be it on this application of U46. Okay, that's it. We've just back rolled our Param 5500 self leveling overlay cement. Uh, which was followed by E32 water-based epoxy, which was then followed by um, U46 water-based polyurethane. And I have to tell you, it laid out beautifully. It's uh, really nice and glossy. More importantly, you're left with a really durable floor. It's going to provide excellent scuff and scratch resistance. Every project has its own unique qualities. For this reason, that's why it's important to consult your Duraman representative for project-specific questions. Now, you may have questions on mix ratios, which is certainly listed on their website, uh, or other project concerns such as moisture. Now, the industry standard is uh, three pounds of moisture vapor transmission in 1,000 square feet in a 24-hour window. Now, Duraman has a complete line of moisture-related products. For example, Purdue MVT will uh, take eight pound readings and it, it'll uh, cover up to eight pounds in a thousand square feet in 24 hours. Purdue MVT Plus will uh, get you 18 to 20 pounds of moisture vapor transmission and bring it down to within acceptable tolerances. And also a great system to consider is Purdue UMC, which is the ure urethane modified concrete, which is good up to 18 to 20 pounds of moisture vapor transmission.